Uh, a very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. So, we thank our Lord for giving this uh, opportunity today to take some time to discuss uh, His wonderful words of life. Uh, today, we are going to see what is the meaning of church in the Bible. So, generally, church means what? You see, church means a building. You see, it should be having a cross on it. And some people have uh, uh, thought that the church should have a bell also. And uh, there should be a particular, uh, you see, uh, construction of a church. It will be like this shape. You see, it's generally thought is that, uh, that is the church. And there is a particular, uh, you see, benches where everybody are seated. So this is the, the thought uh, about the church. So church uh, means uh, a building. So therefore, when uh, Christians uh, casually speak, they tell which church uh, you're going. Uh, you see, which church uh, you're going means what? Uh, which place you're going? Uh, you see, that means uh, uh, the building uh, is the church. Uh, therefore, the people reply, I'm going to St. Basilica, Basilica's uh, church. I'm going to Infant Jesus Church. I'm going to full gospel, you see, church. So there are various, uh, you see, uh, you see, interpretations, uh, uh, various uh, things. Uh, everybody believes that this is the church. Uh, you see, church means a building. You see? Okay. Now, was there any church in the days of Moses? If you put a question, what does the Bible say? Let us read Acts 7, 38. Acts 7, chapter, verse 38. Uh, Stephen, mother, can you read Acts 7, 38, mother? He was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers. And he received living words to pass on to us. You see, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. So here it says the church was in the wilderness. Now can there be a church in the desert where the people of Israel traveled and came to the promised land? You see, how can there be a church in the wilderness? So that too, when they came from Mount Sinai in the uh, parched land, was there a building? Was there a cross on top of the building? You see, the Bible says there was church in the wilderness. So how can the church be in the wilderness? Okay. Let us read Acts 8 1. Uh, Acts 8 1. Sahaja Buddha, can you read Acts 8 1? And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except, all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Thank you. So it says there was a great persecution against the church. You see, there was a great persecution against the church system, sir. Apostle Paul actually persecuted the church. So what did he actually persecute? Did he persecute the building? You see? Did he persecute uh, the construction? You see? The church? You see? So what is the meaning of church? You see? Did he go and, uh, you see, uh, hit uh, the buildings, the walls uh, of the churches? So what did he do? So, general idea is that, uh, you see, the church is a building. Isn't it? You see? Well, let us read one more verse. Romans 16.5. Abhishek Buddha, can you read Romans 16.5? Yes. Hello? Romans 16, 5, brother. Okay. Like 
लाइकवाइज ग्रीट द चर्च दैट इज इन देअर हाउस सल्यूट माई वेल बिलव ईपा नेटस हू इज द फर्स्ट फ्रूट ऑफ आई ख्या अंटू क्राइस्ट लाइकवाइज ग्रीट द चर्च दैट इज इन देअर हाउस ये सेस द चर्च वॉज इन साइड देअर हाउस यू सी नाउ इफ ए चर्च इज अ बिल्डिंग यू सी इट ए पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रक्चर एंड अ क्रॉस ऑन इट एंड ऑल You see, if that itself is so huge, you see, then how can that be inside somebody's house? Verse clearly says, "The church that is in their house." So, these uh, verses clearly puts a question, sir, in our mind, uh, saying, uh, "What is the meaning of the church in the Bible?" If then in the Bible, you see. the church is not at all a building you see is never the building is not at all a building with a particular shape size and all these things no that's not the uh, what the scripture says you see but then what is the meaning of the church as per the bible the word church comes from the greek word That is called as ecclesia. An ecclesia in Greek never means a building, but it actually means a group of called out ones, a group of people who are called out of the world to live in Christ. This is the meaning of the word ecclesia, and uh, this is the word. that has been translated as church in english in our bible let us read first corinthians 1 2 first corinthians 1 2 emmanuel brother can you can you read first corinthians 1 2 first corinthians 1 2 paul called to be the apostle of christ jesus by the will of god and our brothers Sustainers. First Corinthians, first chapter, second verse, brother. Second bit. And to the church of the God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be His holy people, together with all those everywhere who call who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Ah, uh, thank you, brother. See here, the definition of the word church is given in the Bible itself. Apostle Paul is greeting the church. of god which is at corinthians and while addressing what is the give the expression for the church at corinthians he says to them that are sanctified in christ jesus called to be what called to be saints with all that are in every place call upon the name of jesus christ our lord both theirs and ours the meaning of church in the bible is this that they are the group of uh, sanctified ones uh, in christ jesus uh, called to be saints this is the actual meaning of the word church you see the word sanctified is the same thing that is translated as saints so the church means actually is not the building but is the group of people who are called to live a sanctified a holy life therefore we see in the days of moses in acts 7 chapter there was a church in the wilderness was what in the wilderness who was there it was god's people israel who were called out of egypt to live a separate life in god and apostle paul persecuted the church in jerusalem means what did he persecute the building it did he demolish the wall no he actually you see persecuted the people the god's children god's people isn't it and similarly therefore we read uh, that uh, the church that was in their house apostle paul greeted them the church is in their house so it was actually a group of people who were gathering in their house actually initially when the church uh, you see began to develop after the pentecost many believers began to come into christ 
So what happened? Uh, you see, the gathering began to develop. So the people began to gather in the houses. You see, initially they were gathering in the houses uh, because Jerusalem was a city and that city, a lot of uh, Christians were there. You see, and they did not have a common uh, gathering place, uh, but uh, they all gathered in small, small places yes, in their houses. You see? So, in their houses only, you see, they were gathering. Uh, you see? And that was called as the church. Not that the building of the place were called a church. The people who were gathering there, they were considered as a church. But you know, dear brethren, this uh, idea about the church uh, is a building. It actually began during the Dark Ages, during the days of Constantine, the Roman Emperor. You see, he got converted to Christianity for benefits, uh, for not for really love on Christ. You see, as he got converted to Christianity, he offered the whole Roman citizens to get converted to Christianity. And if they get converted, they would be paid well, they would get good jobs, they would be given land, you see, marriage would be conducted. All the things the emperor will take place, uh, you see, they take care, sorry. You see, the emperor would take care of the entire thing, uh, you see. Hence, uh, many people got converted, uh, not because of love of uh, Christ, uh, no, not because of love of truth. They did not know the Bible at all, you see. So what happened? Huge gathering began to come. Once when the huge gathering began to come, the place was not sufficient to gather in the house. So, then what happened? Uh, eh? They began to gather in a common place. You see, at that uh, common place, the king uh, built it. Imagine, if a king builds a common place for gathering, can he build a small hut or house? He, according to his standard, began to build big, big uh, churches, cathedrals. That is the time the word cathedrals was given to the church. Big, very big, like palaces. You see, all the things completely taken care of the king. What happened? There the thought began to come that the church means what? Church means building, not the people. So since that time, Church, 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 church. Yeah? People tell, no, I go to this church, I go to that church. Forget about going to that church. You should be church. That is what the Bible says. You see? So who are the church? If you see, the Christians are the church. You see? See? The Christians, those are called the church. You see, the church of God. Now, who is a Christian? If you see, a Christian was one who, if smote uh, on uh, one cheek, would uh, turn other cheek. That was actually a true Christian as per the Bible. But today, what has happened? A Christian is the one who is very stubborn, you see, and who is very adamant, you see, who has his own ways, you see, a worldly way, you see. Seek the Lord only for money and benefit, nothing else, you see. They drink, they enjoy the world. You see, they smoke, today they marry, tomorrow they are divorced, and day after tomorrow again they marry another person. They wear clothes which are not accepted in the Bible at all. You see, these are the Christians today. You see, the original meaning of the Christians is totally gone today, dear brethren. So, hence, if you see, Christians if you tell that we are Christians, everybody will look low. Why? Because Christians means this has become a very, uh, you see, a bad impression is there. Because they commit all sorts of sin. Okay, Nobody is there to ask them. They don't have fear upon God also. They can now do all sins and go and confess it to the Father and go and confess it to God. All their sins will be forgiven. So daily sin, daily commit sin and daily ask forgiveness. So hence what has happened? Christians means they are indisciplined people. 
therefore if somebody asks oh you're christian now means what they will tell you uh, what's so special about christianity huh? isn't it the so what has happened the real identity of christian is gone you see and today what has happened if somebody meets a real a genuine christian the people tell oh you are a true christian that means what uh, false christians are only there in the world no true christians only it's only composed of uh, false christians just carry the bible go to the church uh, you see and come back uh, without even understanding the truth uh, you see hence uh, today you see dear brethren what has happened the idea of conversion has come through this uh, and these incidents only you see they ask no oh you got converted how much they gave you because that is the way it was originally happening so christians today have become very you see a bad name among society if we can say you see like you see there are more number of christians in jail than other people you see and any villain role in the film which is offered to whom it is offered to a uh, christian tani lily robert peter all these famous names of christian names these are all this is the role of villain why because the christianity is itself is become a uh, the true identity of christian itself is gone the false christians are highlighted and they think this is itself is christianity dear brethren this is the church that taught believe so today we are going to see what the bible says about christianity about the true church you see dear brethren this is god's plan for the entire mankind you see so we are going to study in detail in coming uh, days but here you can see there is a a, a portion uh, called as a that is the first dispensation that means the first world remember we have studied the subject about the three worlds this is the first world beginning from the creation of adam to the flood this is the first world and since the flood till the second coming of jesus this is called as the second world and after it is going to come the thousand year reign of christ that is called as the third world okay now if you see on this chart there is a, a pyramid that is called as a and it is standing upon plane n now what does plane n represent n in god's plan represents perfection you see the perfect stage of a mankind when he was created this uh, pyramid uh, represents the adam only man adam was created in, a, in god's image you see and he was perfect in god's sight he was uh, having a proper standing you see before uh, god and the other and therefore see that represents uh, whom adam you see and when adam sinned he lost the perfection you can see the pyramid the top head you see that structure that that itself is gone and it's become a imperfect structure and come down to plane r now what is plane r dear brethren you see plane r actually represents the plane of death you see is fallen into the plane of death you see and uh, through adam this pyramid is small you can see here but here this pyramid is what uh, is very big here you see what does that represent that represents uh, you see when adam was created he was alone you see he was the only one who was perfect but his generation were fallen to sin a very great in number you see they increased in number but they all and the the condition of death they are not born in a perfection stage where uh, you see um, adam uh, was okay now you can see here one more pyramid you see that uh, pyramid represents our lord jesus christ our lord jesus christ when he came to this earth you see he came on the perfect plane you see without a sin holy harmless separate from sinners you see 
dear brethren so that was uh, you see jesus uh, at the perfect uh, level uh, so if uh, somebody believes in jesus what happens uh, their sins are forgiven they are restored back to their perfection uh, you see in which adam was created only by faith not by real uh, literally they are restored hence uh, we will now zoom it up and come to the gospel age because uh, the church uh, is uh, at the you see uh, gospel age okay now if you see here uh, in this gospel age you see there is a plain end and there is a you see a group which are composed of q p m and n what is if you see these are the different types of christians in this world today so this church is there but this church again doesn't have a head it's not perfect because who is head of the church if you see it is our lord jesus christ and the lord jesus christ is in heaven you see he is in heaven he is head of the church you see so here if you see you can see first group of people that is section q they are attached to plain n but uh, not above it they are below it so plain n what did we see it's a plain of perfection but they are not above the perfection they are not completely justified they are below plain n that means uh, when compared to the world they are much better but they are not uh, you see justified they are not perfect before god now who are these if you see these are called as the hypocrites you see these are the people who go to the church but uh, they don't believe that jesus is their personal savior jesus died for their sins why because first of all they don't realize that they're sinners you see they don't have real faith on jesus they don't believe in the bible you see they worship and believe other gods also along with jesus they think that uh, like other gods are there so many thousands thousands of gods are there jesus is also one of the god like that uh, and they speak uh, lightly about jesus they don't uh, have so much of faith and trust on the lord and neither in the virgin birth of jesus uh, you see they, they believe in various other doctrines and theories they say theories which are outside the bible uh, you see like evolution you see whenever there is a mary festival they go for uh, you see mary festival when there there is a mari festival they go for the mari festival also so these are the people who believe both uh, you see other gods and jesus also but they don't believe jesus is a person so they are not justified their sins are not forgiven and they haven't come to the perfection stage but uh, when compared to the world they are much better the world is so down but compared to the world at least they have a little bit of faith in the lord and they come little bit closer hence uh, these are called as hypocrites uh, a disguised christians not completely justified in jesus blood so okay this is the q but above q there is a very big portion called as p you see they again they are above plain n not attached to plain n but they are above who are these if you see these are very good believers dear brethren you see they believe in jesus you see they they are uh, christians who go to the church believe in jesus that jesus died for the sins jesus is the personal savior you see have faith on jesus believe in jesus you see they have repented from sin you see they have really repented from sin they don't want to sin you see they have turned to the lord they praise him they sing praises to him they sing songs to him you see they attend the cottage meetings they attend various other meetings wherever the you see the bible is preached uh, and they give offerings to the lord uh, you see but uh, they have their own ambitions uh, you see they want a comfortable life they want a rich life uh, they want all the blessings from the lord they want that the uh, lord will bless all their uh, you see uh, work uh, in abundantly so they may be very rich uh, and have a you see 
comfortable life. They don't do anything for the Lord. You see, they just give offerings. That's all. You see, but you see, they want the Lord to protect them. They want the Lord to hear their prayers. You see, huh? but they don't even try to achieve what actually the Lord wants them to be as per the scriptures. You see, they want Jesus to fulfill uh, all their desires, uh, bless them, solve all their problems, but they don't sacrifice. You see, they want everything from the Lord, but what they are doing for the Lord, you see, nothing. They don't offer, you see, anything. They don't sacrifice for the Lord, uh, you see. They don't take any risk for Christ's sake. You see, they avoid uh, sinning. They avoid speaking bad words. They avoid seeing, seeing uh, movies, uh, cinema, TV, all those things. Uh, they try to live a godly life. But uh, just uh, by giving away sin, just by trying to live a godly life, does it make one to be, you see, a Christian? You see, dear brethren, no. As per the Bible, no. Because many people try to give up sin, you see, in the Bible, like in the Old Testament, you see, so many faithful warriors were there. They try to give up sin. And even today also, so many people go and live in the remote places to avoid sin. You see? But does it mean that uh, they are, uh, you see, the true Christians? No, dear brethren. These are the Christians who have faith. But the faith is not accompanied with the work at all. What does James say? Faith without work is dead. You see? So similarly, their, you see, work in action, working out the salvation is nearly dead. Jesus, when he did his ministry at the first advent, so many people came behind him. The Bible says thousands, thousands came. Everybody trampled one upon another. Read Luke 12, 1. Luke 12, 1. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read Luke 12, 1? In the meantime, when they were gathered together in an innumerable multitude of people, oh. in so much that they trod one upon the another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye the leaven of the Pharisees, oh. which is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. You see, so many people were gathering God. Innumerable multitude of people. He so much the Dread trod one upon the another, dear brethren. Imagine, you see, if there is a gospel meeting today, how many people will come? Thousands, thousands will come. Now. One stamping upon another, there won't be space at all. You see, such a huge crowd, you see, they come. Same way, during the days of Jesus, who all came with Simsa? Eh? Thousands, thousands came, trampling upon one another. You see, Jesus must be really happy, no? Why? Thousands of people are following him. You see, you, you, if today if somebody is following uh, on uh, YouTube or Twitter or uh, Instagram or Facebook, oh, million, million followers. Uh, you see, they feel happy, no? Uh huh. They're very much happy. So, similarly, Jesus also should have felt happy, no? Thousands of people are following him, no? Huh? Correct, no? But why did the people follow? If you see, eh? so many people, so many times, Jesus did not have time to even eat also. You see, many people were following him. You see, him, uh, is it it? Crowd uh, gathered together. Crowds, uh, you see, eh? thousands, thousands were following. Uh, eh? But, we see in the Bible that the entire city also was gathered. You see, we can note on these verses, Mark 6.31, Mark 1.33, Mark 6.31 and Mark 1.33. You see, so many people were gathering, one trample upon each other. You see, the entire city was at the door. Okay. But, did Jesus believe these people? That is the main question. So we may call ourselves as Christians, but the matter very, very important is that not that we should call 
that we are Christians, we are followers of Jesus. Jesus should confirm that uh, she, Jesus should tell us that we are the disciples of Jesus. Read what uh, Jesus actually told John 2, 23 to 25. Saiji Budar, can you read John 2, 23 to 25? <clears throat> now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. But Jesus could not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. Okay, so here you see, when at the Jerusalem during the Passover, what happened to himself? Many believed in Jesus' name. Underline, many believed. So who are these people? These are good believers. Very, very good believers. They all believed in Jesus. Even as today, the world Christianity is in the world. They tell them, we are good believers. We are good believers. Yes, they are all good believers. They all believed. Even in Jesus' days, thousands, thousands trampled upon each other and believed in Jesus. Why, why did they believe? Huh? What does the Bible say? When they saw the miracles, which he did. Because of the miracles, because of the benefits, they believed in Jesus. But did Jesus believe them? Huh? Did Jesus believe them? Read verse 25, brother. Huh? He did not need any testimony about mankind, for he knew what was in each person. Ah, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them. Though they believed Jesus, Jesus did not believe them. You see, that is very important. No, Jesus should believe us. Jesus should trust us. But he did not believe such a huge crowd. Why? He knew all men. They are all coming only for benefit. He knew Jesus very well knew. You see, dear brethren, Therefore, Jesus did not believe them. So, just being a believer is not sufficient, dear brethren. Very clearly, the Bible says just believing is not at all sufficient. Then what should we do? The same thing Jesus told once to the huge crowd. See, once what happened? Huge crowd would be following Jesus. Thousand, thousands. Immediately, Jesus stood turned back to the crowd and told the terms and conditions. Read Luke 14, 25 to 27. Uh, Abhishek Budar, can you read Luke 14, 25 to 27? I am eating rice. Ah, Emmanuel Budar, can you read Budar? Okay, Luke chapter 14, 25 to 27. Mm. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not have it, father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Ah. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. See, what is the terms of disciple? First of all, becoming a disciple is very important. Then next thing is going to heaven. You see, what does the Bible say? So great multitude, when you are coming, Jesus turned to them and said, Turn to whom? The believers crowd and said, If any man wants to come before behind me and follow me, what he has to do? He had to hate his father, mother, brother, sisters, husband, wife, children, yeah, his own life. What is the meaning of hate? Brother, what brother you are telling to hate? Actually, hate is not the proper translation here. Loveless. First thing important should be given is to for what? For our Lord. Our God important should be given. That is the meaning. You see, he that doesn't love me more than father, mother, brother, sisters, husband, wife, you have own children, he can't be my disciple. See, father, mother, it's very easy because once they become old, they will... Sent to the home for the age. Brothers and sisters, they will get married and they will get separated. Now, the great difficulty is uh, wife and children. They can't do it now. They can't leave it. Uh, you see? But, and your own life. That means what? Uh, you see? Whenever there is a important work for us, 
But at that time, if there is a Bible study, to whom would we give preference? Would we give preference to Word of God, the class, or do we give preference to the worldly activities? If there is a marriage, if there is a birthday, if there is a function, you see, if we are giving importance to those things than the classes, it means that we are loving the world more than the Lord. The preference should be given to whom? First to Christ. That's what he says. He that doesn't love me more than all this, he cannot be my disciple. Then, what does he say? He that doesn't bear his cross, come after me, can't be my disciple. First thing is that deny yourself. We all got our selfish, shames, ambitions, everything, dear brethren. You see? There is nothing wrong in having all these things. But these has to be denied for Christ's sake. These have to be denied for God's sake, for the truth's sake. You see, then take up the cross means what? Take up the risk. Take up the responsibility, you see, for Christ's sake. And come after me. Follow the footsteps of Jesus. Then only we can be his disciples. Or else you cannot be his disciple. That means just by being a believer, it is of no use at all. That's what Jesus says. You cannot be my disciple. Now we need to think whether we need to be the disciple of Jesus or just a good believer. Deny ourselves. Carry the cross and follow Jesus. Not literal cross. And put a dollar or put a uh, you see, cross on the cloth and gown and walk you see, not little cross. Cross means what? Responsibility. Suffering, sir. You see, pain for Christ's sake, dear brethren. Some people misunderstand this one thing. Oh, brother, then we should go for the village and do village ministry. We should go and build home for the age. We should go and build orphanages. We should go and give food to the poor. You see? And take care of the school, poor school kids. You see? Huh? Is this uh, and build hospitals? Is this the sacrifice? Uh? This is not sacrifice, dear brethren. Uh? Jesus never did these things. Uh? Did Jesus build any hospital? Did Jesus build any school? Did Jesus uh, do any social work? No. Did Jesus go for the home for home for the age home, or did he go to any jail? There was jail in his days. He did not go to the jail and preach to the prisoners. This is not uh, NGO activity. This is not following Christ. Uh, you see, this is not at all what Bible says. You see, we need to go one step ahead. What is the step? Uh, you see, then we need to see what actually Jesus did. If we see what Jesus did, then it, it is the same thing that we need to do it now. You know, just see this... Uh, you see screen. See here, Jesus is there. You see, Jesus. Okay? Jesus was born on this plane, a plane of perfection. He had no imperfection. God would hear his prayers. He had fellowship with God. You see? While we are sinners, we don't have any fellowship with God. But when Jesus took baptism in River Jordan, when he consecrated, what happened? He came a little bit higher. You see, he came a little bit higher to a plane M. Now, what is a plane M? A plane M is a plane of consecration where he offered himself as a living sacrifice to God to do Lord's will. He was willing to die for God. That is the step. That is the stage we need to come. Because we are called to follow the footsteps of Jesus. If Jesus has taken that step, we need to do the same thing. You see? Imagine Jesus was a perfect man. He was sinless. He had all the authority like a perfect Adam had. Isn't it? So he could have lived a comfortable life. Jesus had to die, you know. He could have lived an enjoyed a com comfortable life without committing sin. And at the last moment, he could have just breathed his uh, breath and uh, left his life and died. That would have been a ransom. But that would have not given us a good example of a master. You see, he could have done good business, earned a lot of money, isn't it? He could have done it. Who is Jesus? You see, Jesus was wiser than Solomon. Solomon, day, as the Bible says, 
the gold it was treated like stone there was so much of gold abundance huh? the value was so less if jesus was so wiser than solomon means in solomon days only 40 years there was no war if jesus had used all his talents you see he could have ruled over this world even till today he could have acquired the entire world forget about ammani or bill gates he would have been the richest person you see but did jesus do that one no why because that was not god's will satan suggested the same thing you please worship me i'll give you entire world did jesus accept no because god wanted him to offer his body as a living sacrifice sacrifice is preference sacrifice is uh, you see his own thoughts and everything god why to do the lord's will uh, you see dear brethren so jesus you see took the step uh, and that step uh, you see is offering himself as a sacrifice read hebrews 10 chapter verses 5 to 7 brother can i ah please brother stephen brother please hebrews 10 verses 6 to 7 or 5 to 7 okay mm. therefore when he cometh into the world he said sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not but a body as thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin as thou hast no pleasure thou then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me ah do thy will o god very good brother see what is say Uh, god doesn't want uh, sacrifice of bulls and goats uh, but god had prepared a body a body for jesus uh, and that uh, had to be laid on god's altar as a burnt offering he says no huh lo i come in the volume of book it is written of me to do thy will o god jesus came to this earth offer his body as a living sacrifice to do what god's will not his own will you see yeah? having his own will and doing all the things to fulfill those wishes no, no no jesus came to this earth to do god's will similarly we need to do the same thing read romans 12 one brother romans 12 one uh, emmanuel brother can you read romans 12 one Romans two one one. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Brethren means what? Ah, uh, the believers. Apostle Paul is requesting the believers, brothers, uh, believers. Uh, I'm telling you by putting the mercies of God. Ah, uh, what is the mercy of God? Ah, uh, first of all, we are sinners. You see, there was no obligation that God should save us from death, but here He has been abundantly merciful. He has forgiven all our sins, given us the robe of righteousness, and called us to be of the heavenly salvation next to Him, to sit next to Him, to be like His Son. This is the mercy of God. He is putting the mercy of God and saying, "Just don't be like that one. Just don't be like a believer. Come forward. Come one step forward." offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that means what even as you are staying alive you see you need to live a life of sacrifice to do the lord's will you see so dear brethren offer your bodies as a living sacrifice sacrifice you see to do who's will huh sacrifice to do god's will you see Uh, and it says uh, holy and acceptable to god you don't sacrifice which is very cheap things to god you see the sacrifice of things which is holy acceptable to god you see accept god should be able to accept it because cain and uh, abel both offered the sacrifices but uh, whom sacrifice did god accept it was only abel's why 
kind uh, did not uh, offer it in a proper spirit uh, you see if he would have done it uh, right way he would have been accepted uh, but here you see it up there and that was not the case uh, therefore uh, what does uh, it say uh, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice uh, you see holy acceptable to god uh, uh -huh. yeah, read it once again brother uh. <clears throat> Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is a true and proper worship. Thank you, brother. Sorry. So it says, which is a reasonable service. You see, what God is giving us, a precious reward, compared to that one, you see, what we are uh, giving our body, a waste body, first of all, is dead body. You see, what is that one? Uh? It is just a reasonable service. It's of no use at all, dear brethren. But then God is saying, this is a very small thing. This is a step of a believer. Offering your body sacrifice means what? You see? Sacrifice means you know what? Huh? Sacrifice means giving our preference to God. You see? Imagine, huh? we all have a preference of ourselves, no? You see? We all uh, want to live a luxurious life, very happy life, comfortable life, always want our wills to be done. You see? But for Christ's sake, we deny that one. For truth's sake, we, we don't do that one. That is sacrifice. Like for example, imagine if there's a lot of trouble in the family. What do the parents do? The parents sometimes, even if they don't have food for themselves, they sacrifice their food for the sake of children. That is called a sacrifice, dear brethren. That which is our right, that one, we're leaving it for God's sake. That one, we're giving it for Christ's sake. You see, that is uh, called as sacrifice. Uh, you see, dear brethren. Like for example, imagine if you want to travel uh, some place. You see, and if it cost uh, uh, five thousand rupee to travel uh, uh, by flight, uh, and if it cost uh, three thousand rupee to travel by train, and if it cost thousand rupee to travel by a bus. Now, what would a person who is uh, a real Christian, who is called to offer sacrifice, you see, huh? what does he think? Uh, he has got his own luxury. He has got his own right. He can sacrifice whatever he wants. Uh, you see, he can enjoy whatever he wants also. That is his right. Uh, isn't it? Uh, like, for example, he has got his own liberty to go in a flight, have a comfortable journey and come back. It is his own 5,000 rupee. There's nothing wrong in it. For a natural man, this is absolutely correct. But for a spiritual man, what would he think? I am a disciple of Jesus. Instead of living a comfortable life, I can sacrifice myself and go by bus and thus, I'll be saving around 4,000 rupees. And that 4,000 rupees, I can use it in the Lord's service. That is something we call as sacrifice, dear brethren. You see, letting out our preferences. Sir. You see, letting out our desire. That's what Jesus says. If any man wants to be a disciple, first thing you do is that deny yourself. You see, deny, deny, deny. Deny yourself. Next thing, carry the cross. Third thing, follow me. You see? So this thing, who does, uh, these are the real Christian statements. Therefore, in the chart, if you see, there's a group. You see? A big group. Who is the big group? Huh? Those are the called ones, the believers. Huh? They are good believers. So they don't do anything for the Lord. I think by just giving money, going to Sunday to the church, that's a great thing. That is not a great thing. That is not doing anything for the Lord at all. That is your obligation that you must do. 
There's nothing great that you're doing. Uh, going beyond this one is this group, the chosen group. Uh, you see, they were called and the chosen. You see, the brethren. So, read Matthew 22, 14. Matthew 22, 14. Abhishek, brother, you're there? Matthew 22, 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Abhishek, brother, please read. Okay. Shaiji, brother, can you read, brother? Yes, uh, for many are invited, but few are chosen. Brother, am I audible? Say, brother. Some audio problem, brother. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read? Hello. Ah, brother. You are clear. You are clear, uh, Sahaja Buddha. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Very good, Buddha. You see, many are invited. Very good. Many are called. Called for what? To believe in Jesus. But it is only few people who are chosen. Now, the question is that whether we want to be a good believer or whether we want to be a good follower. You see? So, a decision is ours. You see, now who is a true Christian? You see, not one who believes in Jesus, but that's the first step. You see, the next step is that you need to follow Jesus, be the faithful followers of Jesus. Uh, see, Jesus did one miracle. You see, once uh, when he was coming to Jerusalem, on the way, you see, he had, uh, he met uh, 10 lepers. You see, so, he had uh, 10 lepers uh, and uh, 10 lepers who saw him from a very uh, far, uh, you see, crowd. They cried, uh, saying, Master, have mercy on us, or son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus uh, told them, go and show it to the high priest, your leprosy shall be cured. You see, then as they went, what happened? Uh, their leprosy was cured. Let us read Luke 17 chapter. Emmanuel, brother, you are there online? Can you read Luke 17 chapter? Luke chapter 17. Luke 17 chapter, brother. Uh, yeah. Luke 14th 17. verse. When he was, when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Mm. See? Yeah, he knew one. Mm -hmm. Okay, 18 first. Has no one returned to give praise to God except this forgiveness? Uh -huh. You see? What has happened? Ten people were cleansed. How were they cleansed? You read that verse carefully. You see, it says verse 14. As they went, they were cleansed. Imagine their leprosy and all, it would have complete and their muscles, bones, everything. But suddenly, as they were walking, immediately within seconds, everything became all right. The skin became very clear, so beautiful, so happy. They could feel that energy from inside. The sickness gone. Imagine such a condition. At least somebody, everybody will come now. Come back to the Lord and say thanks. Imagine if you have a, a disease, a deadly disease like cancer or AIDS or something is cured by a doctor. What will we do? Immediately run to the doctor and say, we'll show gratitude. You see, honor him. But here, only one person came back, it seems. That he was a Samaritan, not even a Jew. Jesus questioned, is there nobody else than this stranger to come and honor. This is the condition of today, dear brethren. So, who are the church? Think. You see, now we need to be which part of the church? You see, whether we need to be just a believer, you see, in our sight, in God's sight, but that doesn't make any real use 
for our salvation. That is the first step. But do we need to go one more step? Yes. <laughs> Isn't it, dear brethren? Is just believing in Jesus sufficient? No. We need to go one more step. And that step is a faithful follower of Jesus. Okay? So this is the true church. We are going to continue this class for other, uh, you see, uh, two, three weeks. So anybody has got any questions, any doubts, uh, you can ask. Uh, anybody, any doubts, any questions, you can ask. Sir. Anybody has got any questions? Sahaji brother, any questions? No, brother. Okay. Were you able to uh, follow, uh, understand it? Yes, brother. Yes, sir. Um, but only thing, uh, it will be good if I get the, the PDF file for previous classes. Like what uh, I received for uh, Tabernacle. Okay. I'll do that, brother. I'll definitely uh, send you the PDF also. Okay. Abhishek brother, you're there. Any doubts, any questions? Yes. Tell me that. Uh, it has been 2000 years that Jesus Christ went to Supreme Heaven. When will he come? When will he come? We will see when he is going to come back. So all mm. those things will come uh, on uh, stage by stage. But before those things, are you? Yeah. Did you really follow today's subject? Did you understand it? Uh, no. So you are quite busy. Uh, I was eating rice. 